Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Mario and welcome to the channel. I am super excited to present to you all today something that I've been working on for about six months now, and that's my own safari layout. I'm here at the Mounds in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. It's a beautiful 18-hole chorus owned by the city, maintained beautifully by the local disc golf club here. And I already love the layout like it is. I love shorts. I love reds i love blues but what i wanted to do and something that always kind of had a gripe and i know they're working on this but i wanted to create a layout where i could achieve three main things one i wanted to make sure that every tee shot i was doing was going off a tee pad two since i'm kind of you know just starting ma2 i'm not the farthest thrower i personally wanted to get a course where i could or I wanted to play around where I could get, you know, at least two full rips for myself to get to the basket. And three, obviously want to mix things up here a little bit and not just play the same holes over and over. First and foremost, obviously this layout does not work if the course is full. I would say this works if maybe there are two or three other cards um, on the property during that time while you're playing, then I think you can get away with it. With that being said, Tier, I hope you all enjoy the video. You're going to see every good shot, every bad shot that I did in this round. And I made some really great putts I'm super happy with. I missed. And I also did some horrible tee shots, which you all are going to see how punishing um, this particular layout can be if you don't hit your line. So hope you all enjoy. And comment down below. Like this video. Subscribe. Share this with your other disc golf buddies if you enjoy it. Bye-bye. All right, so stepping up to hole one. This is par four, 498 feet. This goes from T pad one to basket one long. Basically, the play is you want to get into the second landing zone, which is past the guardian trees. I'm going to throw a grace on an Anheuser. Threw that absolutely beautifully. Uh, it faded just perfectly. Actually, almost aced uh, basket one short, so I was very happy with that one. This one's gonna leave me here, if I had to guess, maybe 150. So I'm just gonna take my zone here. Again, at this point, I'm really just pressing record and really wanna get this video out. So I haven't warmed up anything here. These are pretty much first throws of everything. So I take my zone, felt so great out of the hand. And can we just, oh my gosh, that almost did it for the Eagle. That would have been absolutely insane to start the round. But we'll go in for a uh, tap and birdie here. Super happy about that. Now we move on to hole two. One of my favorite ones on this layout. This is par four, 601 feet. This goes from tee pad eight to basket two. You have the forehand play if you want to get around these big uh, pine trees in front. But I usually opt for the right gap. And I'm basically just going to try to throw the same line I just did on, on hole one. So I'm going to take my grace, throw that on Anheuser and just let, kind of let it fade through this gap here on the right. Obviously, if you miss, if you early uh, left or you go right, you can be in trouble. And that's exactly what I do. I late, late release so bad. Uh, fortunate to hit a tree and not get too far out of the main fairway, but this does leave me here with probably a 390 carry to the basket. I'm gonna take my scorch here. And I really don't know what it is about downhill lies but my footing feels so weird i probably probably just need to stop making a run up and just do a standstill but i can already just tell looking at this video here that i'm already holding the disc on an anheuser which is not what i need to do for this scorch since it's pretty understable and as you see it completely burns over and i probably advanced maybe 180 feet so Nonetheless here, uh, this kind of gets us close to the basket. I've been working on the glitch upshots, really liking the glitch. Some days I am money with it. Um, other days, you know, it's a learning process. Obviously I haven't warmed up here, so not really thinking too much of it. Absolutely juice it. And unfortunately this gives me about a 25 footer for my first real putt and tester. Felt so great, perfect power, just pulled a little bit right. So kind of bummer, but you know, we're going to start this one here uh, to go birdie, then bogey. But we move over to a uh, hole three now. One of my favorite ones as well. This is, this is a par three, 246 feet. This goes from tee pad three to basket six. And 
I'm just gonna take my CD1, and this is just all about a stock pushing hyzer. So I'm just gonna toss it up there, let the disc do the work. Absolutely threw it money. Honestly, I'm thinking in my mind that I'm probably under the basket. And uh, really, to my surprise, uh, I was parked. So uh, nice um, bounce back there from the bogey. Moving on over to hole four, par three, 390 feet. It's actually to the left of that white tree trunk you can see in the background. But this goes from tee pad five to basket three. I'm gonna take my grace and just kind of push it out there. Unfortunately, I end up hitting one of the little limbs and I think it just slightly misdirected. I think I had the right power and everything, but it basically pushed it right and kind of left me for this weird um, lie here. So I'm just gonna do a little patent pending. I'm probably like 40 feet from the basket, but I'm just gonna take my zone and just let it hyzer back. So it gives me, you know, a simple 15 footer to clean up uh, for the par. Now hole five, this is going to be uh, par four, 442 feet. This one goes from tee pad four to basket seven. So you have the option to really go after it and go for the eagle if you wanna take the water carry, but it's a very tight line to follow. I have found that it's actually just easier for me to just throw my glitch out to the top of the hill and then actually attack the second shot. I'm really not going for eagle on this one. I'm always gonna pretty much go for birdie. So the basket is actually situated behind those uh, trees in front of me through the gap. And so it is a little windy here. So I'm gonna take my CD1, throw it on Anheuser so I can get through the gap. And then once it gets through it, you know, hopefully have it fade out towards the basket because right where that uh, dead tree is there um, on the side of those bushes, it's probably no more than 35 feet past that. So I do that. Unfortunately, I release it flat so it and nose up, so it uh, fades a lot quicker than I need it to be. Fortunate to hit the dead tree there, and so now we're gonna give me a tester. Again, this is probably about 35 feet uh, just outside circle one. Haven't practiced straddle putts in a minute, so just kind of hoping and praying. Again, right power, uh, just aim's not there yet. So anyways, we're warming up here. All right, anyways, moving along here. This is a hole six, par three, 295 feet. This goes from tee pad six to basket one short. Um, this is like another stock hyzer shot. Um, you can't really tell in the video, but these bushes on the left really take away um, uh, a lot of the fairway. So you really have to push it out wide. If you early release, you will get punished. So I take my grace. I had a right to left win in this one and actually really pushed it nicely. Probably one of my best best shots. I didn't really know where I was, but I was happy to see that I made it pin high. And so I've got a about a 25 footer here, maybe 20 footer to clean it up and then just pulled it left. Again, power is there and everything. I'm just, you know, not, not, I'm not releasing from the straight of my core to uh, the basket. All right, hole seven, par three. This plays just uh, regular um, eight. So tee pad eight to basket eight, this is 220 feet. I'm gonna take my zone. I'm gonna throw this on a, a slight Anheuser, let the zone stability just take over and push me right through the gap. And it exactly did that. I'm thinking I'm probably about 15 feet here. Um, and yeah, little elevated basket, not really much of a tester here, but just to clean up here. Uh, nice to get birdie on that one there, um, always. All right, hole eight, par four, 426 feet. This is tee pad nine to basket five. Uh, this is not a really good shot at all. Um, you can't really see anything, but uh, just, just so you know, there is a gap on the left side, which is kind of a safe up shot, but I'm gonna kind of go for the eagle here, which is basically boosting my farthest distance disc to get over the trees. Unfortunately, I threw it out hyzer and it goes straight into the trees, which you can get in a lot of trouble. And if you're in there, it's basically jail. So you're just gonna see me throw, pitch out my resistor here. And this basically gives me, this is probably about 80 feet, 85 probably, trying a stepper here. <laughs> really no chance at all for that. Uh, but, you know, I'm gonna get up there, clean it up. And this is a par four. And I think this is a, I think this is a fair par four, so. Uh, you can really get in trouble if you get behind um, that massive line of trees there. So 
Uh, but moving on here, we are now hole nine, halfway through, par four, 433 feet. This is a uh, great bomber shot if you've got it, but this is gonna be um, T-pad 10 to basket 16. I do have a headwind in this moment here, and I don't know what I was thinking, trying to release my grace on an Anheuser, but I just, or flat actually, but as soon as I released it, Heiser, and released it late, it absolutely turned over went into those trees. I don't think I've ever been there for this shot, so that was pretty disappointing, but I was very fortunate that it did punch out. So I do actually have a direct line to the basket. It is on a hill, so I'm gonna take my reactor here, which is my mid-range, and just kind of uh, throw it straight. And I thought I did a really great uh, throw. Um, I, thought I, I thought it might've skipped under the basket, but that grass is very sticky, so it kind of left me you know, another 20 footer straddle putt. And at this point, I'm really not feeling confident in my putt at all from anything outside 15 feet. I'm getting a little bit closer, but still a little frustrated because I know I have the skills to make those putts. But yeah, I don't know, it's a little different when you record yourself. You're, you're trying to think of that too at the same time. So anyways, we move on here. Uh, I love this hole. This is a um, this is hole 10, par three, 282 feet. This is tee pad 17 to basket 10 long. Uh, it is a little awkward um, to do the run up, but I'm going to take my CD1. There is a headwind coming, and unfortunately, I just babied this so bad. And yeah, that, there's really nothing more to say there. So this is going to give me about a 75 footer here. Um, I mean, I'm definitely getting my practice in for my step putts, that's for sure. Uh, after listening to Brody Smith, um, him changing his C2 and, and out to, to step putting, I went and tried it and actually really, really liking it. So, uh, but nonetheless here, I'm really not expecting to make this, but hey, if I can get underneath the basket and have a stress-free par here, I will uh, do that all day. And that's what I do here. Again, feeling confident at 15 feet right now. Moving on here, we are now at hole 11, par three. Um, supposedly it's 387 feet. I don't think that is the case here. I think this is probably more like 300. Probably need to redo the measurements on this one, but this goes from tee pad 11 to basket 13 short. There is a mando, so you have to go left of this tree and there's a little nice grab you can hit, but if you just hit the tree, you know, it really doesn't matter what gaps there are. So I've got like a patent pending here. I'm gonna take my Leopard 3, stand still, and absolutely out of frustration, juiced it, uh, nose up, and of course it doesn't advance super far. But out of fun, I was like, you know what? I probably should have thrown my Crave here. And yeah, uh, absolutely hit the perfect line with the Crave, 10 feet from the basket. But I'm not gonna take that one. We're gonna keep it real. So I take my Leopard Lie here, uh, this gives me about, you know, 50 feet, 55 feet. Stepper again, and we're just getting in those reps, even though I'm frustrated. No idea why I should be, because I haven't practiced putting before filming this video, so literally doesn't matter. Uh, I'm only competing against myself at this point. All right, if you like bomb holes, this is one for you. This is hole 12, par five, the only par five in my safari layout. It is 740 feet. This goes from tee pad 14 to basket 12. Obviously you have the whole fairway in front of you, but if you're just early hyzers or you re or it turns over, you can quickly find yourself in trouble. So it's really not as straightforward as you see. I think par five is fair enough for this. So I pull it so bad, fortunate to hit the tree and it hits out. So I'm in the fairway, still in prime position, but just really didn't advance as much as I, I want to. I'd really want to be by T-pad 12. So out of, again, frustration here, I throw my scorch. And it's so funny when sometimes you just take a disc and throw it and don't even think how it absolutely laces and gets right to the perfect landing zone. I'm thinking, wow, how did I pull that one out of my rear end? So I get this lie behind this tree. I really want to go for the eagle here. I'm going for my third shot on this par five. So I threw it and just did not have the stability to turn over. But as you can see in this shot, these leaves are kind of moving. I'm definitely dealing with some wind. I'm super uncomfortable in this position. So I throw the disc and didn't even give it a chance here. So disappointing I get the par five here, 
But hey, what can I say? I've got an eagle once before, so I'm happy with that. All right, hole 13, par four, 549 feet. This plays regular. So this is tee pad 13 to basket 13 long. Uh, so basically you're just going to, I'm gonna push my grace out there as far as you can. And wow, had a really amazing throw there. I was very pleased with that. Uh, you'll see in just a minute, I actually end up parking uh, basket 13 short, which was, I think, a first for me. So I'm behind this tree, I've got a little awkward lie. So I take my reactor and I'm probably about 260 from the pen and no idea what I was thinking. Absolutely juiced it right. Like I am so late releasing, it is pathetic. And I get to my lie and at this point, I was thinking about just stop recording. I said, I don't even want to record this. People are going to think I'm going to suck. So I'm just get up here and I said, all right, I got another circle too. I'm not going to think about it. No pump fakes, just throw it. And then boom, baby, let's go. Oh my gosh. I was freaking fired up to see that one hit. I was, I needed that one. I needed that birdie. Don't have time to celebrate here. Moving on, we are now hole 14. This is a par three, 298 feet. This is from tee pad 14 to basket 15 short. You wanna get through this gap. There are some little dinky limbs there. I've hit that more times than I can count. Uh, but that one was really, very pleased to get that one clean. And this leaves me about a 40 footer. And I'm thinking, feeling really confident, obviously without, you know, if I can just do the same thing I did on the last one, not think about it, don't do any pumps, just take it up and do a stepper. I do that and absolutely canned it. So I'm really freaking pumped up at this point. I really needed that one. See, I mean, I don't suck that bad. So uh, it's nice to see some putts go down. Uh, moving on, hole 15, par four, 605 feet. This is um, this goes from tee pad 15 to basket 15 long. This is absolutely a bomber. Uh, you wanna get to the light grass. I did not do that. I got in, Definitely late release there. My scorch turned over and I'm on the tree line, not in the great position here, but just kind of sitting there deliberating what I'm gonna do. I end up taking my uplink and just kind of throw it up there again in frustration and through the absolute most perfect turnover line I think I have in my freaking life. So that probably carried 290 and I am six feet from the basket. Like it was unbelievable how good that shot was. This camera angle does not give it justice how hard that shot was. So nice cleanup here from six to 10 feet. Got another birdie, super happy. Hole 16, par four, 620 feet. This is goes from tee pad 16 to basket 10 short. There are a couple things you can do. You can go for the super sky Anheuser look on the left side, but I like to go for the hillside on the right. I just want, really wanna to get to the top there, let it, give me a look to the basket. I threw it absolutely perfect. Couldn't have thrown that any better. I mean, that's uh, so ideal where I need to be. If I can get to tee pad 17, I'm in really great position here. And as you can see, it's you can see it on the right. So at this point, I've got a left to right here. I'm kind of deliberating what I want to do here. When I have gotten here and no win, I typically throw my glitch and I have parked it from here, which is super nice. But with a little wind, kind of a little out of my elements. So I end up deciding on throwing my proxy. I haven't really thrown this much here. I'm thinking it's gonna do well. Uh, unfortunately, um, absolutely babied this here. Did not want to, you know, late release it. So I end up early releasing it and just drove it straight into the ground. So anyways, it's gonna leave me about another 55, 60 footer. I'm obviously feeling very confident in my step putts right now. So I said, hey, let's, why don't we get a third one on camera? So I'm setting up here, again, not thinking about it. Just gonna set up and then do my stepper. And oh my gosh, I really thought that was gonna go in. I was gonna go nuts if it did. I'd probably backflip off that basket if it had gone in there at that point. So man, um, my stepper's Finally starting to feel really great here late in the round. So anyways, I tap in for the par and then we move on to hole 17. This plays regular. So if it's in the short position, it's a par three. If it's long position, it's a par four, 549 feet, basket 17 to tee pad 17. You can kind of see a little dot in the background. That's gonna be where the basket's at. 
Uh, no wind tears, so I'm going to take my grace, throw it on Anheuser. You definitely want to be right on this fairway. You don't want to be left. You have to contend with those trees. I throw it about as perfect as you could. It fades just in time, and I'm really in prime time territory. Like, you cannot be in a better position for this hole unless you just go farther into the gap. So at this point, I'm kind of deliberating. Do I want to throw a zone? Um, again, really no wind here. Uh, maybe there was a slight left to right. I cannot remember at this point, but I end up, again, I really want to uh, dial in my glitch. I just really love that disc. I mean, I, I, for a long time, I didn't really didn't throw it, but recently I have been and really just want to learn that touch. So I'm going to kind of do that here. And I'm thinking just throw a slight turnover. I do that. I kind of did a little too much force, but actually it ended up cut rolling towards the basket um, and just for fun, I end up throwing the zone. Glad I didn't because I babied that. <laughs> so we're going to take the glitch there since I threw it first. And this gives me a, a easy 15-footer uh, to uh, just go ahead and wrap things up here as we uh, go ahead and head into the last hole. Um, sitting at four under right now. I think five, well, four under. I can't remember here. So nonetheless, this is uh, hole 18, par three, 320 feet. This one plays regular, so tee pad 18 to basket 18. Just want to, you know, pump it through the gap there. Really nothing to contest except for the big trees, the early release of your late release. So you really have to hit your line here. And uh, I normally do, but I absolutely juiced it upwards. That thing's going to go into another world, which I am not from. So I'm thinking I'm in the bushes. I'm thinking it's a horrible way to end the round. Uh, but fortunately, I end up getting uh, about, you know, 50 feet again. <laughs> so I'm thinking in my mind, all right, boys, let's go ahead and run it. Let's let's end on a banger here. So I'm just going to set up, do my circle two, and hit the bottom of the cage. So uh, nonetheless here, hope you all enjoyed the safari layout. If you like it, have any critiques, make any changes, comment below.